everybody, it's Seriously Sydney here, and today I am showing you guys how to draw a praying mantis. So, to start this off, I'm going to include the reference image or the my inspiration down in the description, as this does not end up turning out to look exactly like the piece, but it is an image from Pinterest, so, yeah. Um, what else? Let's see here. So the important points of this piece, to get it looking correct, the focal point is going to be the head, the head of this insect. Its eyes are very large, so it is very important to get that aspect correct. If you get that aspect correct, the rest of the piece will kind of work together. But So as humans, we recognize the eyes in things, and if the eyes or face does not look right, it kind of messes the drawing up. Or if you were taking pictures, it would mess the picture up a little bit. So that is important to get it to look right. It doesn't actually have to be proportional, it just has to look correct. So here you can see I'm erasing this because I had the I had started the image way too high on my piece of paper, and this praying mantis is very long antenna, or at least I made it to have super long antenna. So, for the head, uh, it is a kind of pizza slice shaped head, if you want to think about it that way. And then the neck is kind of like a sloping or oblong rectangle. It's not really a good rectangle. It's a wavy rectangle. There we go. And then for the back, I just kind of sloped, sloped it. If you want to think about it, it's a really stretched out S. And then the other side of the neck is just a line parallel to previous. For the joints for the arms, they're just kind of two circles. And then the plate, or... I guess you could say the edge of the body that is closest to you. I just kind of did two parallel oblong S's, you could call them that. So they connect from the first oblong rectangle underneath the neck and they kind of go down to make the rest of the plate. Um, Yes, you can say the upper body of the praying mantis. So you go down to do that. Now for the arms, I started, if you were to think about it like bones, I made the center line where the theoretical bone would be, and then I added, I made another parallel line next to it to make, to match the uh, par two parallel lines on the main body of the praying mantis, and then I fleshed it out a little bit with um, on both sides to give it an arm. <laughs> now I'm going in with a darker pencil because I was finding the lines were kind of blending in a little bit and I needed, it was very important for me anyway, to differentiate the two lines. So this is just a sketch. I'm going to, I end up transferring this to watercolor paper later so I needed to remember which lines were which. So you can see I went in with like a 6B, 6B, something like that. Some really soft lead and, or er, a really soft pencil and darkened up some of the lines. And later I end up going in with pen to really differentiate it. But here I, um, what did I do? Kind of generally put in some of the lines for the eyes, then I decided to move on to do the plates on the face. So the plates on the face are very important because they help to make the face look proportional and they also help because the head is kind of in three-quarter view, with, like the rest of the body, it's closer to front view than three-quarter, it's somewhere in between three-quarter and front. So, 
I'm making sure to get the plates kind of aligned and the little detail. So between the antenna, there's this little, I don't know what to call it. Kind of reminds me of a hat, a very pointy hat or a crown or it's like a candle. There it is. It's like there's a candle like a candlestick that's melted down a little bit sitting right on top of its head in between the uh, the two antennas so I'm kinda drawing that in getting the base of that in and yeah so that's where I'm going so it is starts off with like a Hershey kiss shape right above right in like the center and then from there, it's like a candle stick that has the wax kind of gathered at the bottom in a pool. You'll see what I mean in a second. But yeah, so I'm working on defining those details, getting those lines looking the way I want them to. And continuing on with the plates on the face getting that to look somewhat proportionate. So this aspect is more of detail work, you could say. Well, not really detail. It's Depending on how far you go with this sketch, this would be considered the detail work. So I'm not adding any shading here, this is all just plain line work. So you can see how I'm adding the plates, trying to make sure I differentiate it, and now I'm kind of shaping the eye. As the eyes are a very important part of this piece, as I mentioned earlier. And then these eyes are kind of, if you wanted to think of them as squished almonds. <laughs> like instead of the nice pointy almond, you turn them facing from horizontal to almost vertical so the points are up and down. And squish it. <laughs> and that's about the shape of the eyes. So a little bit, a lot more rounded than an almond, but still kind of pointy towards the top and bottom. So once I get that, I start working on the little candle stick on the head. So it's kind of pointy or that part right here reminds me a little bit of a ribbon like at the in the book on bookmarks. So the top of it reminds me of a ribbon on bookmarks, but then it kind of slopes down around the little Hershey kiss from earlier, and it's like the pool of wax just kind of pulled up there. I thought it was very interesting. Now I'm adding detail to the plates on its neck, differentiating the segments. And somewhere in between here, I sharpened my pencil so that I could get uh, more detailed lines that didn't smudge nearly as much. Here you can't quite see what I'm doing, but I am defining, or I'm starting to define these little... I don't really know what they're called, their technical name. But, yeah, I go back in with the pen, but there are these little, I want to call them antenna around its mouth, but they're like little segmented pieces. I don't know what you want to call, whatever you want to call that. They're like little um, triangles that get progressively bigger as it gets closer to its mouth. 
And for its mouth, I just drew a figure eight, or yeah, just figure eight, um, a horizontal figure eight for its mouth. That's kind of what its mouth looked like to me. And let's see here, going in with pen to differentiate the things that could be kind of confused or the lines that might get lost. So I want to make sure I can definitely see those lines. I don't want to brush over them or forget about them when I transfer this piece. So, yep, I'm going over all the fine details, the things that could kind of look like one line due to the smudging, or the things that might be mistaken for like the outside. Because I'm not adding shading, I found that it's very important to differentiate it. If, you're, if you end up shading this, however, you won't need you won't need that pen or anything because you're shading to differentiate the different parts. Okay, just going back in, adding some details, and now I'm just getting close to doing the antenna. Drawing these, they're like feathers. I drew them as feathers. In the image, they're not feathers at all, but I drew it as like a feather. Um, and if on your on your guys, if you like curl the antenna or do anything like that, you could really help to give it a little bit more personality, and that'd be really cool. <laughs> okay, so I'm just adding the little pieces to the feather to make it look feathery. And you guys are nearly to the end of this quick tutorial or drawing process. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching to this point and if you liked this video and want to see more like it, don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications. See here, since you guys made it this far, comment candle. Or oh, no, 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 comment bunny rabbit if you made it this far. Because you'll see, this is how this is my process for transferring um, the images to watercolor paper, so that I don't have to worry about all the transfer and paper and sketching. I mean, not sketching, tracing paper and the different stuff. So I outline it on the back piece and I draw it in. But you get to see, this is really an evil bunny rabbit. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. You guys can watch the rest of this, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.